Let's ask the man that has biceps that you could only dream of, Brian Logan. Blaine Fowler. <laughs> BYU National Champion Quarterback College Football Insider joining us right now. Blaine, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Thanks. You know, last week after I talked to you guys and I went back and looked online because, you know, you can stream this show later just to look at Brian's biceps. I mean, it motivated me. I worked out like a crazy <laughs> man last week trying to keep up with my with my nephew Brian. It's crazy. how hey. it, He's got that peak going on. Hey, those Uncle, Uncle B, I, 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 I did buys today. I, I did back and buys today. Here's another picture for you. It actually looks like an orange right now oh. that's just that's just like an orange implant like an implant just implemented into my arm an implant I, implemented yeah. into your an implant arm. implemented into my arm hey well i see you know he's I got an orange going so the only thing I, all i can do is is go for a softball then if he's got an orange in there <laughs> i'm gonna have to go for a softball at some point so that's right all right now that we've got the bicep love out of the way which is a <laughs> mandatory segment every time we talk to blaine fowler let's ask you today's twitter question blaine Who's going to be the fall camp MVP? Well, it's interesting. I hear you guys talking about, um, you know, different folks. But to me, it's got to be Taysom Hill. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is why. It's like when we're talking MVPs, it sounds like the theme is who's going to step up and be an MVP that we're not expecting to be an MVP. But I'm telling you right now, if this is going to be a special season, then the guy that is supposed to be the leader, he's got positional leadership and he's playing quarterback. He's a superstar in the making, so everybody on that team is looking to him, and he's got to be the guy. He has to be the MVP of camp. He's got to be the guy that when you get two weeks into it and everybody's getting worn down is the one that everybody looks to that lifts them up, that still has energy, that they go, oh, my goodness, look, this is our star, and he's still going full speed. He looks like he's enjoying himself. He's got a smile on his face. He's making plays. i got to pick my game up. If he's not the MVP of camp, then we got a problem, guys. That's a great point. That's that's a fantastic point because I, I remember when I played in in 2009, uh, my first year, I was I was huffing and puffing trying to get acclimated to just D1 and 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 the speed of the game. And when I saw guys like Max and and Dennis and, and Jan Jorgensen out, you know, 30 minutes before, I was like, come on, okay, all right, get you pumped up and get you going, uh, Uncle B. How much can we expect from the running backs with Jamal now gone? Well, I I think that we learned what we can expect from them when Jamal was gone last year. Remember, there, there was a lot of time when they played without him, and so I do think it'll be more running back by committee, and you've got a group of guys with with different skill sets. I think L.G. Brown can be a combination of physical um, with enough speed to get to the edge, but he's kind of a downhill guy. You've got Nate Carter, who I think is the one guy that's going to maybe be the the beneficiary of more time with Jamal out. He's a real good change-up back. He makes people miss. I've talked to the guys on defense that have had to defend him in practice, and they say that he hits the hole so hard that if you don't, as a linebacker, as a defensive back, get to your assignment, whatever gap you're supposed to be in, if you don't scrape and get there, or if you're not running downhill as a safety run in the alley, he gets on you so quickly that you're off balance and he makes you miss. And so I think that maybe he's the one that we see get the most playing time um, as a result of Jamal not being there, as a change-up back. And then, and I love Adam Hine, and I think he's a workhorse as well. And so I think that you're just going to see a combination of guys in there um, I don't think we're going to see Taysom Hill all of a sudden go, oh, now I've got to run the ball a bunch more because Jamal's not there. They have enough weapons at receiver that they can have the quick throw game be an extension of the run game. They can involve the backs in the throw game a little bit more, and, and I think we'll see them be effective. We learned what they can do at the end of the season last year with Christian Stewart in there at quarterback, distribute the football, get it in the playmakers' hands, and they don't have to rely on a running back to rush the ball 30 times a game to be successful offensively. Blaine, it's interesting that you bring up how or if Taysom Hill's role will change with the loss of Jamal Williams. Taysom was asked about that after practice on Saturday, and he said, I don't think it's going to change at all. Bronco Mendenhall said, I hope it doesn't change at all. Do you really – are you buying into that, that Taysom's role will not change even though Jamal's not coming back in 2015? Now, I, I like the mindset that Taysom's coming into this year with, and that is he's got to be a guy that makes everybody on the field better. And you do that by being a distributor of the football quarterback. And so 
you know, there's one less weapon he has in Jamal Williams, but I still think Taysom's mindset is get the ball to Nick Kurtz, get the ball to Mitch Matthews, throw the ball out of the backfield to Nate Carter, throw it to Algie Brown who has good hands out of the backfield. Get, get the ball to the guys that can make plays out in space, and then, oh, yeah, if a play breaks down, he's going to run around and make a big play. He's the kind of guy that when a play breaks down and, and somebody doesn't contain him on the edge, isn't just going to go run and get you five yards. He may go 70 yards for a touchdown, and he can be game-changing. But he has to pick those spots this year. Without Jamal, I think that it's even more imperative that Taysom stay healthy for a full season. If he's healthy – and distributes the football, BYU can have a really, really special season. I think he knows that going in, and that's why he answered that question the way he did, that it really doesn't change. He doesn't have to carry more load because the load he was carrying to begin with was big-time distributor and making everybody on that field better. Uncle B, let's talk about the uh, true athletes on the field, uh, the defensive side. Uh, Fred <laughs> Warner told us that uh, Harvey Longy has become the, the vocal leader uh, do you think that he can be the guy on the defensive side in regards to leadership? You know, they really need somebody, don't they, Brian? We, we watched that closely last year. They need somebody to emerge and to be the man. And, and a linebacker is, is a good position, you know, because linebackers are right in the middle of everything. They're run stoppers. They've got to get out and pass defense, so they're in a position to make a lot of plays. And you want your leader – to be somebody that's a big-time player. You know, th there can be guys that are role players that, that aren't making as many plays that step up and try to try to be vocal. Uh, sometimes you have great players that are in a position that they can, can be leaders, but they don't make much noise. You're disappointed that they don't take that leadership role. I think he's the perfect combination. He's got an NFL linebacker type of a frame to work with. He's got tremendous speed, um, very, very agile. He's a running back. And, and high school, really, really good running back. So he's got all the physical skills to be a dominant player at that linebacker, like even NFL-type skill set if he continues to work really, really hard and get bigger and stronger and faster. And I hear over the summer that he was a guy that was very vocal. He's got good enough skills that players are going to go, okay, it's okay that this guy speaks up because he's a great player. Because you can't just speak up if you can't get it done on the field. I think he can do both. So there's a long answer to your question, Brian, but yes, I think he can be one of those guys that can get it done. BYU TV football insider Blaine Fowler with us on BYU Sports Nation talking about revelations from day one of BYU fall football camp. Day two, about four minutes from getting underway. Let's stay with the defensive side of the ball, Blaine. How much better will this BYU defense be compared to last year? Well, here's the thing. They don't have to be great defensively for this team to be really successful. They just need to be very sound, and they need to manage points and not really worry that much about managing yards. That's been the focus for Bronco for a lot of years, and last year we found ourselves talking eight, nine, ten games into the season about assignment errors that were resulting in big plays for the other team's offense. They can't have that this year, and I don't think they will. They played a lot of young guys. You mentioned Fred Warner, really talented, very young. Uh, Taki Taki, really talented, very young. We had some veteran guys making mistakes. But think about guys at the corners like Davis and Prater. They were young. They've got a whole year more of experience under their belts. And Michael Davis came over and started to play DB after he had played receiver for such a long time. And so he was learning. It was a work in progress. If they're not significantly better this year, just because of their knowledge of what they're supposed to do and being in the right spots, I will be very surprised. And I, and I think that just by being where they're supposed to be, keeping things in front of them, making teams drive 14 and 15 plays to get a score, they'll be able to manage points. And this offense with Taysom Hill and the receiving core he has and a more veteran line should put up enough points that they can just go out and win a lot of games. So – there's another long answer for you, Spencer, but yes, I think they will be better. I don't think they need to be great. I think they need to be sound in what they're doing and not let big plays get over the top. If they can do that, then BYU can have a really, really fun season. Blaine, you were one of BYU's all-time greatest backup quarterbacks. Uh, <laughs> what advice would you give to a backup quarterback like uh, Tanner Mangum, knowing that Taysom could potentially go down at, at any moment? Well, he's got to 
learn from Taysom about how you approach the game and how you approach preparation and do all that. Because prep at, at the college level is so much different than the high school level. You've got to watch a ton of film, um, and, and you've got to get to the point where instead of thinking through things, you're just reacting, but you're making good decisions and you're getting the ball up on time. And so he's got to focus on just the real simple things right now. Because I guarantee you, if Taysom were to go down the first couple of games, Robert and I is going to really simplify the offense um, so that, that Mangum has simple reads and can get the ball up on time. That's the key to this offense. So he needs to not put too much pressure on himself to be the man. He needs to not try to go out and be an unbelievable vocal leader. He just needs to be a quiet observer right now. He needs to be competent out there with what he's doing. And he needs to watch everything that Taysom Hill does, or that Taysom um, does uh, in terms of work ethic and preparation to become a better football player. And then you know what? When he, if he's thrust into that role, he doesn't need to be a vocal leader then either. I mean, he needs to quietly get it done this year, and when he's proven himself on the field, he can become more and more vocal. I, I hope for BYU's sake that he gets a chance to develop slowly and that Taysom stays healthy because that's the ideal situation. If, if in these first four games with that schedule, they end up having to go with Mangum as a – as the regular guy, man, that's a that's a brutal task to ask a freshman quarterback to take on. So so let's all keep our fingers crossed that uh, that Taysom stays healthy and that Mangum has a chance to develop the way we want him to slowly and over time, learning from a really really good veteran quarterback. Blaine, great stuff. In fact, there were four and a half beeps in that interview, and I don't even care because it was so good. <laughs> There was a half a beep? How did we get a half I, a beep? I don't know. I'm calling it a He's half. It we a missed half. it, and so I'm calling it a half. I'm giving you five. <laughs> I, was, I, was going, I was going for two today. That was my goal, so I underachieved. But uh, next week, we'll, I'm going to have to lower it to one. We're going to have hey, to step yeah, it up. It's, it's early in fall camp, man. you got some time to work some things out. just got to right. pay your bill on time. Uncle. Well, I'm, I'm heading out to practice here, so I'll uh, I'll give you guys your report on practice next week uh, as I'm going to catch a bunch of practices this week. Sounds good. Thanks, Blaine.